One of my biggest frustrations is that when my phone battery dies, the phone is still capable of displaying a full color image of a dead battery, but it's somehow not capable of telling me what time it is. Now, I can't fix that, right? Because that's just, well, I guess the stupid design of, the, of this particular phone, or actually a lot of other phones as well. But maybe we can fix the issue that the battery was dead in the first place, because what if we made an emergency portable power generator that we could use to charge that phone right back up, even when there is no power outlet? So essentially what I have in mind is to make a box with a crank handle sticking out of it that I can then turn to get my phone charged. Pretty simple, right? Kind of like an old school pencil sharpener, except it's not a pencil sharpener, it's a charger. And products like this actually already exist. It's not a new thing, it's just that I think it's fun to build one myself. Now as the generator, what I'll be using is one of these, a stepper motor. And the reason I'm using a stepper motor as the generator is because it can produce a relatively high output voltage at relatively slow rotational speeds. And of course, the speed of a crank handle is quite slow. You know, I can't spin my hand at 5000 RPM or whatever. So we need a generator that supplies a high voltage at low speeds, which is what this thing does. You could also use a high-speed generator and then use a gearbox to connect it to the crank handle, but that makes it mechanically more complicated, which is why I like this solution. However, we can't just plug these wires straight into my phone, right? And there's good reasons for that. So if you want to charge a phone, you're going to need 5 volts DC. So 5 volt DC is what comes out of a USB port, or a, a charger or a power bank, you name it. Now, of course, there could be the voltage can be higher if you're using fast charging and stuff, but today we're just considering regular charging. But of course, our generator is not going to produce 5 volt DC, it's going to produce an AC voltage, and the magnitude and the frequency of that AC voltage depend on how fast you spin the generator. And so what we need to do is convert that varying AC voltage into a nice, stable and safe 5 volt DC that we can then feed into a phone. So we're going to need a bunch of components, we're going to need to build a little circuit to do that for us. So here's what we're going to do, right? So first of all, we have two wires coming in from our generator. Right? And there is an AC voltage on these wires of unknown magnitude, unknown frequency, unknown phase, whatever. The first thing we need to do is eliminate the negative part of that sine wave, because of course if you have a sine wave it goes like this, it has negative parts right there that go below zero. We don't want negative voltages, so a negative voltage is another way of saying the plus and minus, the positive and negative are switched, right? And of course that's really bad. We don't want reverse polarity into our phone. So we need to basically take this negative half and flip it to the positive side like so. So instead of getting a sine wave, we're getting kind of a bumpy wave, if you will. And that's going to be done by a component that we call a bridge rectifier. That's usually the, the symbol people use for a bridge rectifier, right? So after the bridge rectifier, we get kind of this bumpy, but still kind of, it's still kind of a mess, but at least the negative parts have been removed. The next thing we need to do is smooth this out. So we need to make it into a flat, nice DC, rather than this weird bumpy signal. So in order to do that, we put in a capacitor, right? So the capacitor is gonna smooth out all of these little dips right here. So you're going to get, these dips are essentially going to get filled up by the charge that is held inside that capacitor. And so at the output here, we're just going to have a nice flat line. So we're almost there, right? We've converted our AC into a nice flat DC. But the final thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't checked the magnitude of this DC, right? It could still be 10 volts or 15 volts or whatever, right? We don't know. It's still probably going to be too high to feed into our phone. 
So finally, we also add a DC converter. To change that voltage down to 5 volts. So it's going to take whatever we feed in here, whether it's 9 volts or 10 or 13.6, and it's going to turn that into right about 5 volts. Might be 5.1 or 4.9. I don't know how accurate this thing is, but it's going to be accurate enough to charge a phone. So that is going to be the circuit that we're going to make um, to put onto this generator. So we've got some perf board to put the components onto. We've got a couple of bridge rectifiers here. We've also got a DC converter and of course a big capacitor, which is probably a bit too big for this, but you know it doesn't really matter. All right, so let's start by putting these onto the board. Now the reason we need two of these bridge rectifiers is because our stepper motor has four wires coming out of it. So it actually has two phases that we both need to rectify. Now we're going to take our capacitor and solder that on as well because of course the capacitor comes after the rectifiers. So that's the rectifiers and the capacitor in place. The final part that we need is our tiny DC converter that we have right here. Okay, now as you can see, we've connected the generator to the circuit board. And when I take this generator and I spin the shaft, the light on the power converter actually comes on. So that's a really good sign. Now, I'll just hook up my phone to this to see if I can charge it by hand already, but I think I don't have the strength in my fingers to turn this very thin shaft with enough force to actually charge the phone. So it's possible that we actually have to attach a lever to this first, but I want to give it a shot anyway. So let's just grab a USB cable over here, also plug it into my phone, just like that, see so if we can charge this. Hmm. So it did wake up the phone, as you can see, the screen turns on, but it doesn't go into charging mode just yet, so I don't think I'm providing enough power to actually start charging it. So what we need to do now is go into the shed and make a, uh, a crank lever that we can attach to this, so we can actually keep turning it with a greater amount of force, um, and then Hopefully, we'll be able to charge the phone with this. All right, so we've got our generator, we've got the circuit board that we just made. Now what we need is a crank lever to attach to the shaft right here so I can turn this thing by hand a bit more easily. Now that's where this little guy comes in. So this is a little crank lever that I made uh, out of a single piece of box section. It's got a couple of bolts in it, as you can see. Um, and now we can just very easily slide this onto the shaft of the generator like so, and then we can bolt it down. And there you go. Right now, it is a hand crank generator. Now, the next thing that we need to do is get this circuit board attached somewhere, because I don't just want it hanging off the generator by a couple of loose wires. So, what I was thinking to do was just to take this board and glue it to the side of the generator. I know it's not the best solution, but it's quick and easy, right? The problem with that is that this board has all these, you know, soldering joints on the bottom, which are kind of sticking out, so you can't just glue it onto a flat surface. And even if you could, it wouldn't be a good idea because this thing is made of metal, so it would probably cause all kinds of short circuits. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a piece of cardboard, I'm going to glue that to the bottom of our circuit board, like so, and then I'm going to glue the whole assembly onto the generator.
there you go that actually looks quite neat yeah I have to say I am not disappointed by the way that looks so now of course the big question is will this device actually charge a phone well right here I've got my phone and I've got a USB cable now we're going to plug this into the phone and the other end into the machine that we built and now we're going to find out if it actually works so I'm just going to start turning this there you go it is actually charging but I have to spin it quite fast to charge the phone because if I spin it more slowly you see the phone stops charging so you have to spin it at quite high speed which makes this quite a workout to be honest yeah this is actually really hard right so so let's do a little bit of maths right so this thing charges at normal charging speed right normal charging speed for a you know standard USB port or a standard charger so no no fast charging is involved now at that rate it takes about three to four hours to fully charge the phone which is equal to about you know a couple of minutes for charging at one percent now I can tell you <laughs> that doing this for a couple of minutes straight at this speed is going to be quite a challenge <laughs> like I'm not saying it's impossible you can do it but it's gonna be very hard and that just gives you 1% of charge right you would have to do this for hours and hours to actually fully charge the phone so is this a practical machine well um, no it's not right which is kind of a shame given how useful and practical all my other contraptions usually are so you might be wondering what would it actually take to make this machine practical right and, and actually useful well I think there is all kinds of small optimizations you could make to so that it takes less effort uh, to, to charge the phone right you could make this arm a little bit bigger so you can turn it a bit more easily you can get a different generator that you can turn more slowly to get the same voltage so you can make all these little improvements to make it easier to charge the phone but all of those things don't make it faster right it'll still take you minutes to gain one percent and hours to fully charge the phone which is just too long if you're relying on hand power because you're going to get tired so I think the only way to make this practical is to go much bigger right get a bigger generator generate far more power which will require more force to turn that crank and then enable fast charging so then you can actually gain a couple of percent in you know a minute or so and that actually starts to become interesting because then you could actually you know your phone is almost dead you could crank for a couple of minutes and you know gain like five percent that would be quite significant so I would say that these kinds of things aren't really useful unless they're really powerful and can support fast charging in that case they can be quite interesting well anyway that is um, the machine we built and my thoughts on it i hope you enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching